Welcome back to another episode of North Mississippi Outdoors with the Joiners. I'm Jimmy. Wave, Michelle. Uh, we're gonna. We're actually camping at Grenada Lake this uh, weekend, uh, North Abutment Campground. It is about 12 miles from the interstate. Pretty nice little campground. We're on the pond side, so you have a lake side that's closer to the lake, and then you have a side that's across the road and closer to the pond. And uh, that was where the spaces were available, and it's pretty nice. It's a little pond out here. We're actually out here on the dock fishing. You can see Michelle's fishing. I'll show you Bryce. And, and Bryce is out catfishing on the little dock. They got two docks that come out on the pond. We're in camp space 69, which is over there. And uh, it's a real big camping pad. In fact, we could probably put two, two RVs on it. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, we're right across from the swim beach, uh, which is right there. And uh, having a good time out here camping and uh, doing a little bit of fishing. Weather's nice, it's like 70 something degrees right now. It got down in the 40s last night, so it was a little bit chilly last night. Bad side is, is we can't, hold on, I'll turn you around. The bad side is, is you can't have a fire because we are under a burn ban. And uh, so we actually did not know that until last night we started a fire up in the fire pit, fire ring, and uh, the camp host came by and said, hey, there's a burn ban, you can't have a fire. Funny part about that is the burn ban is supposed to be scheduled to be lifted on Monday. Of course, they could redo uh, the burn ban, but we're leaving Monday anyhow, so it doesn't matter one way or the other unless we want to get up in the morning and have a fire, I guess. But uh, we'll uh, walk around the campground and get you some more video here shortly. And uh, thank y'all for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And uh, we do appreciate y'all. So I saw something interesting at the Grenada Lake campground that I wanted to share with y'all. And uh, so you notice the big red semi-truck, tractor-trailer truck, uh, and the fifth wheel, and then the little car. Uh, so on the bed of the truck, he has a, uh, or on the back of behind the truck, he has a flatbed and ramps where he can drive the little car up onto the uh, back of the truck and then hook up his fifth wheel RV and travel around the country. I had uh, ran across somebody that had a similar setup before. Actually, there's three or four of them in the campground right now with the same setup, but I thought it was a pretty neat setup. Uh, so we did stop and ask them, which I thought I already knew the answer to the question, but I stopped and asked, I said, you don't even have to have a uh, commercial driver's license to operate that, do you? And all of them, you know, the guys said, no, we don't. They said, it's uh, not, an R, you know, it's not for commercial use, and therefore you don't have to have a commercial driver's license. And so regular operator's license, and you can set that up, which of course I'm sure it's a pretty expensive rig, but uh, if you wanted to travel the country and pull a really big fifth wheel, in fact, uh, the one guy that I, one of the guys that I spoke to uh, noticed that his, tag, his tags are from South Dakota. And I said, I bet it's really beautiful in South Dakota. He said, well, I wouldn't know. He said, I stayed one night there, got my driver's license and hadn't been back. So I guess they travel for, you know, around the country. But, uh, and retired, I'm assuming, but a uh, pretty neat setup. I thought y'all would kind of get a kick out of that. And how about that, having a truck that you can drive and you don't have to have a commercial driver's license. Um, it does have on the side of it RV, not for hire. Uh, the guy did say, he said, when you, register, when you buy your truck and register, he said register it as an RV, not as a semi-truck. So like I say, we're on the pond side of the campground. And uh, you can kind of see it's a little pond, got geese on the pond. And uh, then it's a levee that goes across that separates the pond from the main lake. And then on the other side of the pond, you can see the, la uh, the lake, what's left of it is pretty much dry. Uh, you know, all the reservoirs in North Mississippi have the uh, fall winter drawdown and Grenada Lake is uh, part of that. It's uh, drawn down. In fact, when I looked at the uh, lake levels last week. I think it is 
uh, like five or six feet below the uh, set uh, level that they want uh, for by December the 1st. So I think it's got a little, you know, four or five more feet to go and then it'll reach the December 1st winter drawdown level. And so it's a lot of mud out there and a lot of birds, but not a lot of water. And this is our camp spot. We are in spot 69, which is actually like big enough for two RVs because it's got a really long driveway. Of course, you probably wouldn't want to be on the unlevel part, but you back up just a little bit of a hill. And then we have our RV and uh, picnic table. Michelle's sitting over there doing who knows what, probably feeding the fish on her Timu app. And uh, as it, we get out of the sun, you can see that it's a pretty nice little setup. Pretty neat little campground, nice and clean. Uh, the one issue that we've got is that the, uh, I can't seem to get the water line water hose to stop leaking. I've done everything I can. And so the water hose runs, uh, the leak from the water hose runs down and hits the steps right where you walk out. So we're having to deal with that a little bit. That's not too bad. So I'm in my truck now and uh, I was gonna ride around the campground and uh, give y'all a little bit more of a view of uh, what the campground looks like. Uh, driving of course because I'm too lazy to walk <laughs> but uh, I'll ride around and, and get some videos of some of the other camp spots and stuff and the lake and we'll probably even go by the spillway there are actually several pull-through options available and a playground right over there that you can use through my dirty windshield there is one of the pull-through sites and uh, like I said, we got, I think it's three people that are in here with the uh, big uh, tractor trailer trucks that are, uh, no, it's four, definitely four. And you see the Volvo over there. That, uh, and they have their little smart car that they pull up onto the trailer, onto the back of the truck, and then hook up their fifth wheel, and they're good to go. And uh, this is one of my favorite ones right here because it's blue. I kind of partial to to blue uh, and uh, the camper matches the truck and, uh, so that's a really nice rig he's got there which they're all really nice by the way it's Sunday afternoon so quite a few of the people have moved out and moved on and uh, this is another section of the campground this is sites uh, 2 through 15 and 16 through 36 that's in this area over here I did check out the uh, one of the bathhouses. <coughs> excuse me, earlier this morning, and it was pretty nice. It, you know, it, it's a bathhouse, so but, uh, it was it was usable. Very clean. This is camp space number 15. To kind of give you an idea, this would be uh, lakeside. Uh, so you can see where the cypress trees are right there. Uh, normally during the summer, uh, the lake would come all the way up to those cypress trees. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, dirt in between here and where the water is. You can see that the lake is uh, fairly well empty. Uh, nice little creek that flows up into the left over here. There's not any water in it hardly at all and uh, got a big flock of some kind of white bird out there in the middle and I see other patches of birds here and there but I do see a boat running across the side of the other side of the lake so I guess it's got enough water to get a boat in at one boat ramp at least I was going to stop real I was going to stop real quick and show you the sign that says uh, reservations must be made before occupying the campsite campsites are $24 a night uh, you can go to recreation.gov to uh, reserve a campsite uh, and uh, as I mentioned before the orange sign right there says that there is a burn ban in effect and uh, you can only use a grill you cannot uh, build a fire uh, and uh, maximum stay length is uh, 14 days but that's standard at all Corps of Engineers campground if you're familiar with the Corps campgrounds all of them are 14 days there is a bump uh, 
five mile per limit, uh, speed, five mile per hour speed limit, and there are uh, speed bumps throughout the campground to make sure that you go slow. So be sure to come and go slow when you come into the campgrounds. As I ride through the campground, I see a lot of out of uh, state uh, tags. Uh, Wisconsin, South Dakota, Missouri, Kansas, uh, the list just goes on and on. Of course, I see a lot of local people. We was camp next to some people. They said they come out every weekend and uh, camp out here uh, and, and that they only live a few miles away. So a little bit of something for everybody, I guess. And through my dirty windshield again, another uh, spot that is a boat ramp, but it's not currently open because the water's too low. We'll pull over there in just a minute. Uh, they do have plenty of dump stations throughout the campground. I'm not sure if you can see because I can't, but uh, plenty of dump stations through the campground. Each of the campsites that I've seen has all uh, it has electric, sewage, and water hookups. Uh, cell service for me, I have uh, Cricket, which is basically AT&T, and uh, we have fairly decent cell service. We get one to two bars. I've been able to search the internet. Uh, with my phone while we was out here camping and take care of some business on, on the phone. Uh, my uh, Bryce has uh, a hotspot on his phone, so he has internet. I've actually been able to get on my iPad with his internet, so the cell service is fairly decent. I mean, I've been to places where you absolutely had no cell service at all. So there is cell service in this area. I was also gonna mention that one of the other fun things for this area was we actually got like 16 TV channels. Uh, most places we go, we have very poor TV reception, but uh, we are able to pick up like 16 local channels. A lot of them are public broadcast channels uh, and like me TV and stuff like that, but it's something interesting to watch. Uh, there's a CBS channel that we was able to pick up this morning. And so you can kind of watch uh, you know, a little bit of TV and some of the shows if you want not really what I care to do while I'm camping so it really doesn't make me a big difference whether the TV works or not and again through my dirty TV uh, dirty, dirty windshield again through my dirty windshield uh, this is a boat ramp actually and uh, again the water is so low that you can't even use the boat ramp uh, but you can see dead end lake ahead uh, signs and everything this is right on the side of the levee uh, and uh, as we get down here, you'll see when I drop off the ramp that there is the end of the boat ramp and I could literally drive my truck out into the lake bottom. And uh, I did see a four wheeler running across the lake bottom a few minutes ago. Uh, let me jump out of the truck just for a second and give you another kind of panoramic zoo, a panoramic view of the uh, Grenada Lake and where it would be if the water was up. But again, this is normal. This is the normal fall drawdown. They do this every year for all the lakes, all the reservoirs. Uh, they lower the water in the winter time and uh, they get it down to a, they have a set level they want to get it down to. And uh, then in the spring, they will cut off the gates and it will fill up very quickly. And usually by uh, March, uh, water levels are coming up pretty good. Uh, by May, they're up to uh, what is the normal summer pool or close to it in some cases it's over in some cases it's less it depends on the rainwater that we receive uh, it's actually been very dry lately which that you know to a certain extent can affect the lakes but i mean again this is just a normal drawdown this isn't anything out of the nor ordinary and just for the fun of it i did decide to go ahead and drive out into the lake bottom and get a little bit of mud on the tires just a little bit as future potential fishing spots. But uh, I'll just turn right around and head right back up the boat ramp. But there's the levee over to the left. So I know the wind's probably gonna be horrible, but uh, this is from the top of the levee. I'm driving across the top of the levee, out across it, and you can see the lake bottom out over to my east. the 
the water drops off at. And uh, over there is a swim beach and another boat ramp. Uh, that boat ramp over there is the boat ramp we used whenever we went. Um, when we fished our bass tournament on uh, Grenada Lake, if y'all remember that video, that's the boat ramp over there. It actually has a little uh, uh, marina pier, a little pier that comes out, which is nice for uh, getting your boat in and out. So now we are at the spillway where the water comes out. You can see they got the gates open pretty good, got good flow going through there. Plenty of water coming out, heading downstream. But we want to see the power of water. That's what it looks like right there. That's a lot of current. Wouldn't think it was that much water left in the lake, would you? But it is. There's the levee. The levee goes on down roaring sound of the water coming through and then it goes on down the channel I uh, stopped at a store a minute ago picked up some stuff and uh, there was a couple of fellows there they had some really nice looking catfish and they had a, a crappie that probably would have went over two pounds they didn't give me none of the details about where they bought it or where they caught them at but uh, they, they had some nice fish so there are some good fish out here, good crappie. Grenada's known for a pretty large crappie. In fact, we'll probably have a, if there's gonna be another state record or world record, it's probably gonna come out of Grenada Lake because they've been, there's some nice crappie in Grenada Lake. But uh, this is gonna kinda be a wrap. Yeah, I think we'll end it with the sun and the spillway in my background and uh, say thank you for watching and uh, please like and subscribe to our videos. And uh, this is a little bit of information on uh, Grenada Lake and camping at Grenada Lake. Uh, I think this is one of many trips. We'll be back again. I've fished Grenada Lake two or three times. I haven't fished Grenada Lake a lot. I grew up in this area, but I mostly fished Enid and Sardis. Uh, Bryce and I fished a tournament on Grenada Lake this year, and uh, we're camping at Grenada Lake now. Been a good camping trip, good campground. Uh, I would definitely come back. Would not have a problem. Would like to come back at a time where we could bring the boat and put the water and put the boat in the lake and try to catch some bass and that'll probably happen sometime next year so thanks for watching be sure to check us out check us out on facebook uh need your support and we do appreciate y'all